This week in Astro History Weekly, we revisit a moment when the sun unleashed its fury on Earth, the Carrington event of 1859, the most powerful solar storm ever recorded. But that's not all. We'll also look back at a daring Gemini mission that proved humans could endure in space, a pioneering flyby that revealed Saturn's secrets, and an international milestone aboard the International Space Station. Let's travel through time. The Carrington event, August 28, 1859. In the 19th century, electricity was still a new force. Telegraph lines stretched across continents, carrying coded pulses of information faster than horses or ships ever could. Astronomers studied the sun with simple telescopes, sketching its spots by hand. On the morning of September 1, 1859, a British amateur astronomer named Richard Carrington was sketching sunspots when he witnessed something extraordinary. A sudden, intense flash of white light erupting from the solar surface. At almost the same moment, another observer, Richard Hodgson, saw it too. They had just documented the first known solar flare. Within hours, Earth felt the impact. A massive coronal mass ejection, a billion tons of plasma from the sun, slammed into Earth's magnetic field. The results were spectacular and terrifying. For nearly a week, from August 28th through September 3rd, the skies erupted in auroras so bright that people could read newspapers at midnight. Reports came in from Cuba, Hawaii, Japan, even near the equator, places that almost never see auroras. But the beauty came with chaos telegraph lines, the internet of their day, sparked and burned. Operators reported being shocked at their keys. In some places, messages continued to send even after batteries were disconnected. The geomagnetic storm itself was powering the wires. The Carrington event wasn't just a light show. It was a warning. For the first time, humanity learned that the sun could reach across space and disrupt our technology. In 1859, the world relied only on telegraphs. But imagine a storm of that magnitude striking today. Satellites could be fried. GPS, internet and communications could collapse. Power grids could fail worldwide. The global economy could be brought to its knees, not for hours, but for weeks or months. Scientists estimate that a modern Carrington-class storm could cause trillions of dollars in damage and take years to fully recover from. Our very dependence on technology makes us more vulnerable than ever. The legacy of the Carrington event is more than fear, it's science. It sparked the birth of space weather studies. Today, satellites like SOHO, Parker Solar Probe and DSCO VR constantly monitor the sun, watching for solar flares and coronal mass ejections. Agencies like NASA, NOAA, and ESA issue alerts to warn power companies, airlines, and satellite operators when a storm is coming. Engineers design spacecraft with shielding, and operators can put satellites in safe mode if danger is near. We can't stop the sun, but we can prepare for it. Gemini V, August 30th, 1965. Before Apollo could reach the moon, NASA had to prove something fundamental. Could humans survive in space long enough to get there and back? On August 30th, 1965, Gemini V launched from Cape Canaveral with astronauts Gordon Cooper and Pete Conrad aboard. They stayed in orbit for eight days, a record at the time. The cramped capsule was nicknamed the Eight Days in a Garbage Can, but the mission succeeded. It proved humans could handle the duration of a lunar mission, tested new fuel cells for power, and gave NASA the confidence to push further. Gemini V was less glamorous than Apollo, but without it, the moon landing would never have happened. Pioneer 11 Saturn flyby September 1, 1979. 14 years later, another milestone. On September 1, 1979, Pioneer 11 became the first spacecraft to encounter Saturn. It flew within 21,000 kilometers of the planet's cloud tops, discovering two new moons, mapping Saturn's magnetic field, and spotting new faint rings. The images it returned were breathtaking, 
Our first close look at the solar system's second largest planet, Pioneer 11, paved the way for the Voyagers, which would follow in the 1980s and revolutionize our understanding of the outer planets. It was proof that robotic explorers could expand humanity's reach far beyond Earth. Soyuz TMA-6 returns from ISS August 29, 2005. Finally, on August 29, 2005, the Soyuz TMA-6 spacecraft returned to Earth from the International Space Station. On board were Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalev, NASA astronaut John Phillips, and ESA astronaut Roberto Vittori of Italy. The mission was routine by today's standards, a crew rotation, experiments, and resupply. But it highlighted something extraordinary. The ISS was becoming a place where nations cooperated in space, not competed. Europe, Russia, and the US all working side by side in orbit, a vision that had once seemed impossible during the Cold War. Soyuz TMA-6 was more than a ride home. It was a symbol of space as a shared frontier. So this week in history gave us a spectrum of milestones. A solar storm that reminded us of the sun's power. A Gemini flight that proved humans could survive long enough to reach the moon. A robotic explorer's first glimpse of Saturn. And an international crew returning from the ISS, proving that space can unite us. Together, they remind us that history isn't just about the past. It's a guide to where we're going. A quick note. If you love exploring the universe with us here at Anantam and Beyond, you can now wear that passion. Our official merch store features cosmic-inspired designs, from astronomy-themed apparel to space art you can keep close every day. Every purchase directly supports the channel, helping us create more deep-dive documentaries and weekly episodes like this. So if you'd like to carry a piece of the cosmos with you, Check out the Anantum and Beyond store. Link is in the description. Where the cosmos explore beyond. This has been Astro History Weekly. This week in space history. See you next Thursday as we continue our journey through time.